Hello, I'm Professor David Ruzik, Illinois Energy Prof, and I'm here today to tell you about Ukraine's nuclear reactors. So here's a map of the Ukraine, and there are 15 of them. Six are grouped together in Zaporizhia, the largest concentration of nuclear plants almost anywhere in the world. These plants are very important to the Ukraine because they generate, at least before the war, 51% of a very large country's electricity. And that electricity is needed so you can keep the lights on and run everything else. To talk about what has gone wrong or could go wrong in these nuclear reactors, let's just review a couple things. So first, fission. We've got a neutron, and a neutron hits a uranium-235, right? And when it hits uranium-235, it absorbs, and then it splits apart. That's fission, splitting apart. And you can see that we made three more neutrons over here. That's what continues on and does the chain reaction. And we also made these the things left over from the uranium. Those are the fission products. Those are the radioactive waste, the unstable elements that over time will give off alphas, betas, gammas. They will um, change into more stable elements in that process, giving off radiation and heat. That's the high-level nuclear waste. But remember, this doesn't come out a smokestack. These things are in fuel pellets which are arranged in fuel pins, which are in a fuel rod, and there's multiple fuel rods, and they are inside the reactor vessel. The nuclear wastes are supposed to stop and stay right there. So, what else is at a nuclear reactor? The Russian nuclear reactors are pressurized water reactors, like many, many places in the West, and they have a balance of plant that makes electricity. The reactor, this thing I drew here, is right there. It heats up. Water is cooled. That water boils other water. That's why it's all under pressure. So the water that goes through the core stays in the containment building. This water goes, runs a generator, makes electricity, makes steam, and is condensed by some external water source. This is the whole balance of plant. Now you notice this large blue object here on the left, that is the containment building. And containment buildings are very, very constructed, foolproof, hard to break, very solid. Here's a colleague of mine, Professor Kozlowski, when this reactor was first being built some time ago, and you can see him standing by the thickness of the wall of a containment building. Three to four feet of concrete, three to four inches, for European visitors, you know, that's about 10 centimeters, of solid steel. It can't be damaged by gunfire, small arms, a mortar, um, a tank shooting at it. Right? This is just way, way too thick for those types of things to breach the containment, which of course is this giant container around the radioactive bits inside the reactor core. So what's the current status of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant? All six reactors there are offline, not making electricity, and are in cold shutdown. And what that means is the chain reactions have long since stopped. The water has cooled down. It's below boiling. There's no pressure in the pressurized water reactor, that atmospheric pressure. And as long as some circulation is maintained, some pumps going, there's enough water flow to take away that waste heat from the fission products. Well, this sounds great. So why should you worry? Well, the country still needs electricity. That's really a major effect of not having the plant. But beyond that, 
remember those fission products are radioactive and they do need to be cooled. And if you interrupted that cooling for long enough, then those radioactive products could potentially release. Now, there's used fuel in the core. We've talked about that, and that's pretty good because that's all inside the containment building. But there's also used fuel, spent fuel, they call it, that is on the site in other areas. Now, that has cooled for a longer period of time, but we've got two locations to worry about this spent fuel that has the high-level radioactive wastes inside of it. Now, there are defenses in depth to be able to keep these circulation pumps going. Backup diesel generators and backup backup diesel generators, monitors and warnings that the cooling has stopped. And this isn't an instantaneous thing. This is something that, oh, well, we got to fix the pump. We see that the circulation is in. You've got some time to deal with that. And of course, for the stuff that's in the core, which is the most radioactive part at this point, it still has the containment building around it. The stuff that's in storage outside of the containment building, it's in large pools, 30, 40 feet deep. The surface of the water is at ground level. You can't really drain it to anywhere, right? Pumping it out would take a long, long time and water might fill back in. So it's probably hard to do damage directly to this fuel either. But I'm sure you're thinking at home, come on, Professor Ruzik, I've seen the movies, I've heard the news, we've got bunker buster cruise missiles, and Russia certainly has those, and indeed, you could blow up the containment building with a sustained intentional effort, and you could launch missiles right into the fuel pond and just keep pummeling it until it's obliterated. What's the worst that could go wrong? Well, remember, war is intentional. And so, with this concentrated, intentional effort, you could distribute radioactive debris. The stuff that's uh, um, in the containment building, right, still has to get through that. And if I still hit this all with some giant bomb or missile, right, okay, coming down here, nose cone and, you know, fins on the rocket, and it comes in with all its might. Sure, this could break up, but remember, it's all going to basically be a pile of rubble with the stuff underneath. Can it get out? It can, but the containment area is likely to be relatively small, and it isn't like if you have a small exposure to dose, you instantly die. It's a cancer risk for the future. Now, this is not Chernobyl. The Chernobyl nuclear reactor was in is in the Ukraine. But in Chernobyl, right, there is no containment building. No containment building at all. Nothing to hold this in. Also, the type of reactor is that when the water came out, when the water flow was stopped, um, this type of reactor, the Chernobyl reactor, uh, does not stop fissioning. It kept doing its nuclear reactions. It does not stop fissioning when water is gone. All right. And that the Chernobyl type design, the RMBK, had massive design faults and massive um, operator error. These are not equivalent situations. If you wanted to make a radioactive release, the Russians have a much better way to do that. They could blow up a nuclear weapon. So why target nuclear power plants? Well, you certainly will deny the electricity that they were going to make. 
You'll frighten civilians and Europeans. Remember, the general knowledge about nuclear power is not that high. Some kind of bargaining chip, perhaps. I don't know what Putin's motives are, and that's not the point of this video. Should you be worried if you live by a nuclear power plant in the Ukraine? Absolutely. You're living in a war zone near a high-value target that just denying electricity to the Ukrainians alone is enough of a motive to blow up the balance of plant so they can't be used. You shouldn't be worried because of a catastrophic radiological risk. That risk is there with concentrated intentional effort to spread the radioactive debris. But if that is really the intent, as I said earlier, you could just blow up a nuclear bomb. Let's all hope and pray that doesn't happen and it doesn't come to that. So that's what you need to know about Ukraine's nuclear power plants.